do me. Um, they can do the worse they do to me, the more outrageous it is. The more people are going to know what's going on. The more people are going to see these videos, um, and, and the more people are going to get behind this situation, and then hopefully um, wake up to the fact that um, you know we we aren't free in this country, and we're not free anywhere in North America. It's the corporations uh, think they own us, and, and this is what they'll go. This is the links that they will go to to show us who their new masters are, who our new masters are, and that is the corporate courts. And so. Um, you know, to Canada and to Rob Menard and, and to the rest of the, uh, the people that are watching this, I'm not intimidated and neither should you be. And I will never, ever turn on one of my brothers um, at, the, at the demand of a court. It does anything. It's like, then why are they trying to get Rob? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's because so, they love me. Well, when the, judge, when the judge enters a plea for you, whatever the plea is, you immediately stick your hand up and say, for it on the record, the judge has taken the stand of the defendant. And then the judge has to be the defendant. Because he entered the plea. Because he entered the plea. Do you think it's, uh, do you think it's evidence that uh, what we're doing is working? Oh, it's definitely evidence that what we're doing is working. I mean, look, look at him. The, 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 the buggers kept him for 19 days in jail. Illegally. And, unlawfully. And they wouldn't do any of this unless... Because if, 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 if I was... Uh, talking about a process that had no effect but and kept people busy, then they would probably just let you keep doing it. Oh, exactly. Need a job? Consider working for the Vancouver Police Department. If you are willing to pervert the course of justice, commit extortion, and cause others to perjure themselves, thus committing a fraud on the court, and you're willing to enforce unlawful court orders without morals or ethics or any regard for the law, we have a job for you. You'll be paid enough so you can buy sleeping pills and sleep at night. You know it's needed, eh? Class action lawsuit against the entire law society and the courts and the police departments. You want to know what it's about? I've stood in courts against members of the Law Society and I kicked their ass. They didn't like this, so they complained to the Law Society. The Law Society tried to get a court order against me, barring me from engaging in certain activities. There is now something purporting to be a lawful court order out there and the police are actively trying to enforce it upon me. But there's a lot of very serious questions about that order, its applicability, its lawfulness, and whether or not the police are engaging in lawful activities in the way in which they are seeking to enforce it. Let's have a little look at the Legal Profession Act that the Law Society points to in order to justify the generation of this order. In the Legal Profession Act, we find in Section 3, it states, It is the object and duty of the society to uphold and protect the public interest in the administration of justice by preserving and protecting the rights and freedoms of all persons. Section B does give them the power to regulate the practice of law and to uphold and protect the interests of its members, but their ability to do this is subject to paragraph A, where they must preserve and protect the rights and freedoms of all persons. Any act that has the duty or intent of affecting, diminishing, or removing previously existing rights must do so clearly, specifically, and unequivocally. Otherwise, it must be deemed that the act does not affect existing rights. Don't forget that. If this was not the case, they would be able to claim that you did not have a right because an act did not mention it. According to Section 11, the benchers may make rules for the governing of the society, lawyers, articles, students, and applicants, and for carrying out of this act. However, when you look at Section 3 of that, you see that the rules are binding on the society lawyers, the benchers, articles, students, applicants, and persons referred to in Section 16.2 and 17.1. When the rules created under an Act are limited in their applicability, then the Act itself is limited in its applicability. This is something I got in my, ma in my email box from someone purporting to be Carmel Wiseman from the Law Society. You'll notice she says we attached the entered order of the Supreme Court of British Columbia. However, what she does not say is that that order has anything whatsoever to do with me. If you look at it, you'll see that there's no notice on there, no words on there saying that, that the order does affect me. But she certainly wants me to believe that it does. Here is the style of cause. You'll notice how the name is completely capitalized and they have decided to label 
as a respondent. I don't remember ever giving anyone the power to change my name nor to assign titles to me in such a fashion. And with that knowledge, I'm pretty sure I can confidently and lawfully claim that I am not the party affected by this order. That is my fair and true and honest belief. I wonder if any police officer is willing to make a counterclaim, or do they feel they are above the law? Here we can easily see that the order was a result of an application of the petitioner and that it was granted without a, a hearing. It was done on the reading of a petition and affidavits of an Ellen B. Gerber and Robert S. Abrams, both of whom are members of the Law Society and who happen to get their asses thumped. Uh, the other one is an agent for the Law Society. Here we also see that the court orders that the respondent, there's a comma, then a name. This is my country. 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 Uh, yesterday I met a couple of cool folks in this lovely bar. We're in the Strathcona in Victoria. They're working over in that big high-rise over there. We're going to meet them, buy them some beer, and have Actually, a little chat. Actually, it was chat. a film called Loose Change. Obviously, everyone's seen that, but yeah, after uh, you look that up, you just keep digging further and further and further and further. And... Until the truth pops out at you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so plain to see now. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, can't but miss like it now. Before, I, you, know, you, you, know, you would never notice what's really going on. Stuff, so. so you guys work construction? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're working over in that big building over there, is that correct? Yes, sir. That's it. How much do you lose every pay period, percentage-wise, roughly? At least a third. Yeah. At least a third. At least a third. At for least sure. a third. Yeah. Now the government <laughs> is essentially a, uh, a service provider that forces you to accept their services, and you're paying for them. Do you think you're getting fair value for your services? <laughs> no. No? Not, not even. Yeah, not even close. The more, the more overtime and stuff I work, the more money they take. The harder you work, the I'll more work, you're taxed. I work 20 so. hours extra and make 300 bucks so extra. So there's no benefit in working harder, being well, an no, entrepreneur? Doesn't, well, no. It doesn't seem like it anyway. That building right there, how many units units in it? Oh. Jeez, oh. that's a, a tough one. Well, there's probably at least 100 units, right? 100 units. I'd say even more. Yeah, at least 100, right? How many of those units would you have to build before you could uh, afford one yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Thousands. Thousands. Do you think that's you'd, fair? You'd uh, literally have to build about 20 of those before you could afford one unit. 20 whole buildings. Yeah. Are you aware that you guys are now seen essentially as the tradesmen? A thousand years ago, the tradesmen would not build anything like that until first they had their home built. Do you think? Uh, do you think you're getting the shitty end of the deal? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I think uh, so. And in vernacular, how do you like that burnt pop tart? <laughs> <laughs> that ain't too tasty. How old are you guys? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Twenty-five. 25. Do you consider yourself a child? In a sense, not really. If I told you that the government considered you to be a child, and thus their ward, would this surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't. Come on, answer uh. the question. I'm trying to. Ha Come on, tell me your truth, there, buddy. It would not surprise me, but I don't know. I don't know that much about the government and all the technical details. And do you know how the government you know, would this surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't. Come on, answer uh, the question. I'm trying to. Ha Come on, tell me your truth, there, buddy. It would not surprise me, but I don't know. I don't know that much about the government and all the technical details. And do you know how the government distinguishes between someone who can be treated like a child and someone who can't be treated like a child? No. Money. Permission. A child will ask for permission to engage in a lawful activity. Mummy, can I have a cookie? Yeah. Mummy just eats the fucking cookie. <laughs> Don't take the cookie. Yeah, if you ask for permission to engage in a lawful activity, the government gets to look at you as a child. Okay. Do you want to smoke a joint? Ah, uh, that's illegal. <laughs> Do you know the difference between illegal and unlawful? No, I don't. Really? So you don't know if you're acting legally, lawfully, illegally, or unlawfully? You just confused me. Yeah. 
<laughs> that is exactly what the law society wants to happen. Yeah. Let me ask you this. You've read the paper occasionally. I know you do construction, but you must read sometimes. Yeah, I glanced it through a few you know times. <laughs> I'm, I'm pissing on you a little bit there, right? <laughs> Just in fun. Never. You ever read where the courts or the government will talk about the need to protect society? Yeah, definitely. Can you tell me the name of your society? No. 